This is the Pixel 7a, Google's latest mid-range phone that promises to deliver most of what the premium Pixel 7 offers, but at $800 less. What exactly does that get you, and is it worth foregoing the trade-offs to save that extra cash? Let's talk about it. I want to start things off by talking about the 7a's design, because it's easily one of my favorite aspects of this phone. Put simply, it feels insanely premium in the hands. The flat slab of Corning Gorilla Glass 3 up front, rounded aluminum frame on the sides, a composite plastic back with a beveled edge that does a surprisingly good job mimicking glass, and of course, there's the aluminum camera bump that's signature to Pixel's core product product ID that helps it stand out rather nicely. In fact, this is one of the best feeling phones I've held this year, period. Certainly a one-up over that Samsung Galaxy A54 I took a look at a few weeks ago. Also, shout out to Google. The colors this year are on point. Coral's looking pretty slick, but for me, this baby blue is where it's at. Now, when I reviewed the Pixel 6a last year, it won me over by offering similar levels of performance to its flagship brethren, the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro. Thankfully, this time, Google's continuing that trend with the 7a by including the Tensor G2, which is the same SoC in the Pixel 7. To be clear, it's hardly the most powerful flagship chip on the market in 2023. However, Google does a brilliant job optimizing Android for its own hardware to run buttery smooth. Smooth like butter, like a criminal undercover. Got him. <laughs> nope, <laughs> not this time. I rarely felt the phone stutter at all during my week of testing, which pays off particularly well on a mid-range smartphone. The normal day-to-day -day stuff, like navigating the interface, social media browsing, streaming the streaming the video, streaming the video, streaming, all the Google. And streaming video feels fluid and consistent, especially compared to that A54 in my testing. On top of that, I seriously love the visual polish and simplicity of Material U on Android 13. Google is absolutely killing it with the software. As far as gaming performance goes, this phone feels virtually the same as the Pixel 7, which is to say, pretty good. Playing heavier titles like Genshin Impact work best when set to medium graphics to get consistent near 60 FPS. Compared to that A54, which needed to dial back settings to practically low in order to get decent frame rates, the 7a offers a healthy amount of performance. Now, a huge reason why anyone would consider a Pixel is because of the cameras, and the 7a unsurprisingly punches well above its weight for the price. It has that trick computational photography characteristic of a Pixel phone that takes excellent shots right out of the box. So if you're looking for an experience matching that of the flagship Pixel 7, definitely keep your expectations in check since there are some key differences between the two phones. While the 7a has a higher megapixel count than the 7, the main sensor is actually smaller. This is especially noticeable in low light performance and overall detail. The same can be said about the ultra wide cameras on these devices. While the 7a offers a wider field of view, I think the Pixel 7, generally speaking, looks a bit better. To be clear, the cameras on the Pixel 7a aren't bad at all. Just don't expect it to be quite at that same level as the Pixel 7. However, what is identical between these two devices is how long Google is committing to support them, with three Android platform updates and five years of security, which is nice to see if you're planning on holding on to your 7a for a while. All this to say that the Pixel 7a is my new favorite mid-range phone. However, with the trade-offs that Google had to make here to meet its $500 price point, there are some downsides I think you need to consider. First, the screen only has a 90 hertz refresh rate. This isn't so much a complaint that I share personally, but often see people point out. And when competitors like the Galaxy A54 offer 120 hertz displays, I understand completely. In fact, it makes that phone in particular feel in fact, it makes that phone in particular feel quicker in terms of perceived speed, despite the fact that the processor on that phone is, well, kind of mid. 
Got him. He's nuts. <laughs> Put simply, the 90 Hertz display on the Pixel 7a feels smooth enough. And I think most normal people would agree. That's what my mom said. We went up to a lot of doctors for that one. They said it was just a rash. <laughs> what is a bigger pain point for me is that this phone gets pretty warm during extended gaming sessions and other intensive tasks. Even more so if you're planning to keep the phone plugged into power. Speaking of which, the battery life could be better compared to other options at this price point. However, the 4,385 mAh battery on the 7A just isn't enough. After a day of watching video, occasional gaming, browsing social media, and taking photos, I barely got through dinner on a single charge. Of course, I know enough to not expect the world out of a mid-ranger like this, but power users be warned, you might want to seek out some alternatives. On that note, the Pixel 7a has the ability to wirelessly charge, which is certainly a welcome feature, although sadly, it's painfully slow at 7.5 watts. Now you can plug it in via USB-C and get 18 watts, but that's not exactly quick either. Unfortunately, it is what it is, but Google had to keep the cost down somehow, or maybe the heat. Last but not least, let's talk about the price. Retailing at $500, the 7a is more expensive than the other mid-range pixels that came before it. That's not to say it's expensive. In fact, you can make the argument that there's more value here than in previous years. However, the price bump over last year's model kind of puts the 7a in a tougher spot. The difference between a 7a at $500 and the $600 Pixel 7 is not that much, especially when the splurge nets you a larger display, a slightly larger battery, a unibody aluminum frame that does look a tad bit nicer than the 7a, but most importantly, a noticeably better camera. A big butt, and I cannot lie. Oh my God. <laughs> 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 but a key point to take note of is that pricing at launch is always in a vacuum. It's funny, you can get a Pixel 7 for less than what a 7a is going for at retail. And for my money, that's the ticket, at least for now. Though, by that same token, you might be able to get a 7a for 350 to 400 bucks in about six months from now. That is, if last year's Pixel 6a is any indicator of how things will go. If you wanna leave things to fate, patience could save you a lot of cash, but only time will tell how low the 7a will actually go. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this phone and if you're planning to pick one up for yourself. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And otherwise, thanks for watching this video on Denki Channel. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs>